And, and now, when you look at a movie like Minority Report, which you reference in your book, is that the way this science is headed in that we're going to prevent crime before we start it by, you know, dealing with criminals who have that biological predisposition? I don't think that what we want to do right now is start brain scanning and genotyping everyone to see, you know, who's got the biological brain basis to crime and lock them up before they've done anything wrong. Partly because I've got a number of those risk factors. I've got a brain scan that looks very much like a serial killer who kills 64 people. So I would be the first one, I think, to be locked up by that approach. But on the other hand, we can get added value from brain imaging in terms of predicting who's dangerous to society and who we should lock up and who not in the context of probation and parole decisions. So right now, we have to make decisions on who to let out of prison early and who to put in prison as opposed to you know, giving them probation. Right now, those decisions are based on social data and behavioral data. Two new studies have come out showing that if we use brain imaging data, <clears throat> we can predict better than otherwise which offenders are going to commit crimes three years later. So there is going to be added value in the future in bringing on board a biological approach to crime in order to better predict who is going to become the future offender. And better decision making in the judicial system has to be in everyone's best interest.